guys is uh, Jacob Parnell. Well, I mean, the whole entire reason why I'm actually doing this video is because I do care about my friend Jake a lot, and um, we've been friends probably three or four years now. Um, he was a very cool, nice kid. He, you know, he was pretty, I wouldn't say basic, but <laughs> he was, he was, uh, he was kind of normal. Like, he had his little quirks and stuff, which made him a more enjoyable person to be around. But, you know, he, uh, went to a party one night. We had a mini falling out, and, um, I wasn't sure what he was doing, but I later heard about it. Um, he, I heard he was taking some, uh, type of drug at a party, um, and since Jake's, you know, he has his corks and stuff, who knows if there was something a little bit off with him. I love you, Jake. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, you know, it brings the question of, like, did prescription drugs, like, actually affect his brain in some way later? Like, did the drugs they took have a weird chemical imbalance in his brain that brought him to the point where he is today? And I still stand by him. He's still one of my closest friends. Um, it's hard, though. It's very heartbreaking to see someone who you're very close to go through an extremely traumatic experience. Um, coping with it has been interesting for me. Like, sometimes I wouldn't know, should I distance myself for a bit or should I still be hanging around him? Should I make sure he has someone to be with, company? And it was just difficult sometimes. Uh, I guess some moments uh, he didn't understand. Uh, one day we were driving around and he didn't, I guess, have... A fateful day. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, he didn't really... I didn't... I couldn't understand what he was necessarily talking about, I guess. Like... I was just thinking, oh, it's just Jake being Jake, but I could see the progression, the progression of it going and like up a mountain, basically. Um, you know, first he was just being weird and stuff, and then it just started escalating. Um, he, we were parked at my boyfriend's parking lot, and we were hanging out, and maybe a little bit of recreational use happened and it progressed it got worse as I was talking to him he didn't know who I was I feel like or he didn't know where we were and nothing could compute and it was almost like we were living in two different realities like he was living in his reality and I was in mine wondering what the hell he's doing and so I got very upset and very scared and I called his mom and she took him in and everything. I had to help him walk or help him walk to her car and everything. And that was very difficult too. Um, just letting go of him and everything. And I could tell in his eyes that he was scared. He didn't know what was going on. And this was even long after the actual psychosis began. Um, it still, I feel like it comes in waves. You know, there's moments where he is completely okay. And it's, he's my best friend again and he's normal. And then there's moments where he goes a little bit off. But I know he's still my best friend. I still love him. He's just a little different for a moment. But it is... It is still difficult to see someone you care about go through that. And like I said, this is the entire reason why I wanted to do this. From, from a standpoint of how I've seen it affect Jacob's life, I, I feel like Jacob is has a harder time with other people now um, as far as talking to him. And stuff like that, because I think a lot of people think, you know, he's kind of out there. And sometimes, <laughs> sometimes he is kind of out there in a lot of his thinking. And, uh, 
and sometimes it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You have to kind of see through what he's actually trying to get at. You have to really think about what he might mean by what he says. And it's hard sometimes to talk to him about stuff just because it, you can't, he doesn't just come out and say what he thinks anymore. He beats around the bush to get to where he's trying to make a point and it makes conversation hard. And I think a lot of his personal relationships have suffered because of that, because people have a hard time talking to him. I mean, I think that that's what it started it, but I think that my mind just took a whole different turn when it started. Like, I think that it just sort of went in its own direction. Like, what happened was it took all of my subconscious thoughts that I acquired through 19 years of living 18, I don't know, however old I was at the time, and just put it into a story or experience that my mind played out and I was living through it. And every single person that I talked to, every single thing that I did was like an experience from my mind. It was like my mind could create things that people would say or things that people would do and I had a grasp on reality but at the same time it wasn't the reality that everyone else saw. So you were like living your own reality? Yeah, I was I was living my own I was living in my own world. Hmm. How do you think the psychosis has affected or affected you and your friends in your social life? I mean, I've lost a lot of friends from it. And I think my social life has come to like nothing. And I don't know, it's hard to sort of think about. Do you think that I'm definitely not as sharp as I was? I mean, before I thought that I figured out a way to um, use electroconductive therapy to, um, like, as a map to try and solve some problem or whatever, but now it's like I think of what I want for dinner.